Barry McCaig, a young RAF gunner, was enjoying a Friday night out with his colleagues. He hit the town in Bury St Edmunds at the end of his weekly duties and was in high spirits when he joined his friends at a local club. The young serviceman left well before closing time. He'd had a couple of drinks and he headed for something to eat. But despite saying to friends that he planned to walk the nine miles back to his RAF base, Corrie never turned up. He was seen on CCTV in the early hours, yet his whereabouts remain a complete mystery. Extensive land and air searches have found no trace of the serviceman, but his family believe someone will have information that could help. Corrie's mother, Nicola Urquhart, and uncle, Tony Ring, told us they're desperate for that help. Um, on Friday the 24th of, uh, sorry, the 23rd of September, Corey went out with his friends from Two Squadron, uh, Aria Honington. Um, they'd just gone out for a night out, it wasn't an occasion. Um, just after one o'clock, Corey had left um, a nightclub called Flex, um, and he walked, he's seen on CCTV, he left on his own. Um, he walked along to a local takeaway shop um, and got himself a takeaway. Um, when he was in the takeaway, he was in a good mood. He was playing rock, paper, scissors with, with a man that he didn't know um, in the shop. Um, he took his uh, takeaway out and there's been CCTV shown of Corey um, shown on the news. Mm -hmm. That's Corey when he's got his takeaway and he's walking um, down to somewhere where he could sit and eat his, his takeaway. He sat down in a shop doorway, um, I think it's called Hughes, and uh, he started to eat his food, um, and he's then fallen asleep for two hours, or just about two hours. That can be seen on CCTV. Um, he then wakes up. Uh, he had been talking to his brother on the phone and, an, and a couple of other friends as well. Um, just before he'd gone out that night um, and one of his friends he'd asked for a photograph it was just of them on another night out mm -hmm. um, when he woke up at three o'clock about three o'clock he then forwarded that photo on to another friend um, so to me it shows that he was aware of time and place um, that um, he's uh, he's then walked just a few yards, you can see him on CCTV. Um, he has had a drink, but he's just slept for two hours. Mm. Um, uh, he then walks down a street, and it's uh, in, in an area called Brent Groval Street. Um, it's behind shops. It's a dead end. It doesn't go anywhere. It's the back of the shops where they would get their deliveries um, in effectively what is a triangle of shops. Um, you see him absolutely clearly walk in there at 0324 and you never see him come back out again. The police have got so much CCTV they've still not been able to watch it all there is so much um, but uh, Corey's not done anything wrong, he's not trying to evade mm. CCTV, you can see him walking straight down the road um, so it doesn't make sense that you don't see him come back out again. Um, they've widened the parameter to look um, further out just in case because it is on a time lapse. So there is the opportunity that perhaps one camera has missed him. Yes. Um, so they've widened it and they've got private CCTV as well as all the council t uh, CCTV and not one single image of Corrie. He's wearing a pink shirt and white trousers. Even though it's, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, he really stands out in the dark. Tony, what are the possible explanations as far as the family is concerned then? I think before I, I mention what they are, I think one of the, the immediately reported um, possibilities was linked to an incident that had happened a couple of weeks prior, um, about 20 miles north at another base, yeah. um, an RAF base near Marham, where there was a, an attempted abduction linked to terrorism um, of a, a serviceman. Now, that failed. Um, that's obviously still an active inquiry. And so, obviously, there was immediately speculation that, that this may be linked to that. Um, the police assessment is that this is not related to terrorism. Now, I have a background in counterterrorism. Um, I concur with that. But that's only on one single item of, of evidence or lack of, which is the fact that nobody's been in touch. Mm. 
and typically a terrorist organization seeks publicity. So that's the only reason why that's being discounted as, as an option, but clearly we must consider all possibilities. That aside, I think it leaves us three possibilities. One is that Corrie's disappeared through choice. Another is that Corrie has disappeared against his will. And the third one, obviously, is the one we don't want to contemplate, but is a possibility which is, through whatever means, he's dead. And if you look at those three possibilities, the one of disappearance by choice, again, the way we've used the evidence to, to dismiss or, or reduce the probability of a terrorism involvement, we use that same logic to really dismiss the likelihood of him going through choice. There's no preparatory evidence of him being ready to depart through getting money prepared and so on. The time of year, or rather the time of the month that he's gone, doesn't make sense. There's, there's n he's not been paid yet. So there's no preparatory activity. There's no obvious motivating factor that would make him suddenly decide to disappear, which only then leaves us those two remaining options. If he's got into a vehicle, which is possible because of the CCTV coverage, we've the police have looked at the, um, the rotation cycles and what have you. It's possible that a vehicle could have obscured his exit from where he was, but it would have taken a vehicle. Mm. Um, and probably for him to be in it, but, but we don't know that for certain. It's, it's one of those open items. Um, and the, the appeal there is, you know, if you gave him a lift for whatever reasons, and obviously you're now seeing the media, we need to know. We need to know where you might have taken him. And the third option is something the police are working on right now, which is the search activity in the local area. It's a, it's a rural setting, um, so it's a wide area. It's a, a significant perimeter. And they're using their own resources and the local voluntary crew, but they are limited resources. And I think that where we do now have an opportunity is through the RAF and the nearby army garrisons in Aldershot. We've got expert search resources there that, um, that we could bring to bear to start covering that wide area. Nicola, do you think Corrie got into someone's vehicle? It genuinely is something that Corrie would do. Right. Um, if you were talking about uh, my other sons, McKeon and Darek, um, they would be more risk averse. They would... They would they would think something like that through and they wouldn't do it. But with Corey, um, he, would, he would make an informed choice. Um, but it, with Corey, um, if he saw somebody walking down the road and he was in his car, he would stop and give that complete stranger a lift. Um, whereas the other boys, they would think, no, yes. you don't know who it is. Well, so when was the last time his mobile was used? His mobile phone was used at eight minutes past three to send that picture. That message. was the last time. That was the last okay. time he physically used it. Right. Um, they've done obviously an awful lot amount of work in trying to track mm. um, his phone, um, but that was the last time he physically used it. So we know he still had his phone mm. when he woke up mm. because it was part of an earlier conversation. Mm. Um, the way that. Tony would be able to explain it far better than I could, um, but the way that they've triangulated his phone, it's from, say, Facebook updating or other apps updating as opposed to him actually using it. Um, and they know that it's left um, the area Corrie was seen going into, mm. um, and they know that it's taken 28 minutes to get from there to an area called Barton Mills, um, which is a big roundabout. Um, and that's how long it would take to drive. So they know that it's, it's not the case that he's walked. Um, when it's got to Barton Mills area, it could have turned itself off. It's just run out of battery. It could have been damaged. It, there's so many reasons why it could have just stopped working yeah. and it's never been picked up by another antenna anywhere. So it could have gone further than that area, but that's the last area that they know that it worked. Is it, is it your belief that he is still alive? Yes, absolutely. Um, honestly, so many people um, have, have asked me that question and absolutely 
the, the, the thought that he's going to come back in weeks saying, you will not believe what's just happened to me. Mm. That's Corey. But you need people to come forward. We do. Somebody does know something. Mm. You know, it is absolutely, nobody can just disappear. Um, I know that. I know that as a police officer, I know that you don't, just don't have any evidence mm. and there is nothing. Um, so, you know, we're doing letter drops. We're, we, the, the, the public of, of England, it's not just, it's everywhere. Um, getting behind a page that we've got, we've got 30,000 people following it and desperate to help. Mm. Um, and so they're helping us deliver leaflets and Corrie's face is everywhere in Bury and, and the surrounding area. Um, but nothing, not one person um, can give us anything and that just doesn't make sense. No. Hopefully it appeals like this will help. Thank Hopefully. you very much for talking to us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nicola Urquhart and Tony Ring, the mum and uncle of RAF serviceman Corrie McCaig. If you have any information which might be relevant, please, please do call the police incident room. That's 01473 782019. I'm going to read that number again because they really, really need your help. 01473 782019. 01473 782019 and you can also find that number on our website. A couple of weeks ago on the programme we looked at the